Oh, I haven't thought about flying for a long time. I have a dream that at that moment when I was alone above the clouds for a long time. I have dreamed of waking up in a room surrounded in blue and green grass and bored years and I could dream of memory. I have a walked back into the past or scratched on the doors of my origins where it all came from since I held up that cape for the last time. Return to Kent Town 10th year anniversary edition is a revised version of Ambien's first poetry book. The book can be purchased from Amazon and it contains numerous additional material. Spoken Label Hi, it's Andien from Spoken Label. Thank you today for streaming or downloading another episode of Spoken Label. Spoken Label was originally set up on beginning of the 2016 and as of speaking has currently nearly 300 sessions. The full archive is available on Spoken Label full stop bandcamp.com although it is available for free for stream and download if you wish I am always grateful for any sort of kind of donation to enable to me to keep the running costs of this podcast going and enjoy take care bye bye Spoken Label Hi guys I'm the end Spoken Label back in the house we're on Zoom again today and we're over to a lovely area of England I not been to for some years, but I do love this area. I love the city, Nottingham. And I've got another gentleman with me who's he's not originally from Nottingham, but we'll come on to that in a minute. Chris Campbell. Now, I met Chris originally for Bell, love the lovely Bella Kenyon, who put me in contact with Chris. And he's just done out a feature book the week and my column the Sunday Tribune. Haven't you, Chris? But well, this podcast was planned before that, just to confuse yeah, matters. Right. <laughs> now, Chris, obviously, the people don't know you, and if they don't know you, I don't know why. So, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody, mate? Tell them where you're originally from. So, I remember you telling me you're not from Nottingham originally, are you? So, no, that, that's right, Andy. So, so yeah, um, my name's Chris Campbell. I, I grew up in uh, in in Bidford, a, a small village in in Warwickshire, and uh, and moved to um, the Cotswolds um, near, near Broadway on the Worcestershire Gloucestershire. Um, border um, so so that's that's where I'm from and um, but for the last few years yeah I've, I've been in, in Nottingham which is a, a great city that I've really got to uh, well was getting to know quite well <laughs> before the uh, before the lockdown um, yes. but yeah I've had, had a great time up there yeah and we tell for like your wife's up there studying at the moment isn't she so and like I said it was yeah. like yeah well uh, when did you when did you both move to Nottingham originally so, so we we moved we moved it nearly three years ago, um, and we, we moved from from Bristol. So, so my wife's been studying a, a PhD um, up here at, at the University Hospital. Um, so, so yeah, we, we're actually we're moving back to to Bristol next uh, next week. So we're in the in the process of the, the cardboard boxes are out and um, yeah, the, the vans the vans booked. So, um, oh, we'll, we don't. Still, don't Same. envy me, mate. I know last time I moved in the, to the apartment I'm in about five years ago, I just kept finding things. And it was like, when Amanda <laughs> my partner moved in like 18 months ago or so, she uh, she had a nightmare in the flat. She'd been in the flat before, for moving me 10 years nearly. And she kept saying to me, I kept finding things on the back of the cupboards. I didn't know I, didn't know I had. <laughs> you do. You just accumulate things sometimes, don't you? So, oh, God. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Anyway, we, we, we've... We've got the major stuff sorted, but yeah, as you said, there's there's all these these smaller things that we're we're, we're rounding up and making sure that, that we don't leave behind. <laughs> right, of course now, Chris. We're really about your writing, not not do a podcast on how to move from one city <laughs> to another. <laughs> Could be a good podcast part to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be the best to give give tips, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, seriously, we're here to talk about your two collections, including your most recent one. Now, yeah. you were telling me before, and I've not read you, I've not read your first one. Was um, Red Rolls and Dresden, which yeah. came out in 2013. And you told me about Dresden was Germany or something, was it? So were you living in Germany at that point? Or? No, no, I was, I was doing a lot of traveling in my um, early 20s. And uh, um, I'd go over to, to Dresden every now and again, which is uh, a city in, uh, in East Germany. So, so I had, uh, uh, well, I still have a, a good friend over there. Um, and yeah, I, I was writing quite, quite a bit. 
you know, from um, at university and, and, and after that. And um, I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd jot things down on, on, on my trips abroad. I, I lived in, in Sweden for a year um, while I was at, at uni and, and it, you know, traveling on trains, um, um, uh, you know, on, uh, on airplanes, that kind of thing. I always, always found that good uh, uh, bit of time and space to be able to, um, to, to, to write things down. So um, I, I was working at, at a local newspaper and, and I remember I, I was, you know, I, I was working on a few things and uh, I was telling uh, a colleague um, of mine in, in the office who, who was a who was a local historian and, and worked on our, our sort of history history pages in in, in the newspaper and uh, I was telling him a story about a, a breakfast um, in 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 Dresden and, um, and and just mentioned bread rolls and, and Dresden and, and he said to um, he said oh that, that bread rolls in Dresden that would be a, a great title for a book um, and it, it just stuck with me so so when uh, um, I published my first collection, Bread Rolls and, and Dresden, which which is a um, a collection of, of poems, you know, based on on, on travels, but but also um, um, uh, there's a lot of short poems in there, and it, it was sort of you know that I'd written as I say as a teenager in, in my early twenties. It was kind of you know growing up, but but travelling too. Um, yeah, it, it it felt like a fitting title. I think great title. It's like I think that's what I've got noise about you, Chris. Like is like you tackle your collections. You come, you've got great titles for them now. Obviously, the second collection is just out now. Why tie the needle? Yeah. Which again is a fantastic title. Now, obviously, before we come into the book itself, um, people would notice in Eagle Eye One. There's an eight year gap between the collections. Yeah. You want to tell us about what you told me obviously off mic before, obviously part of the reason why there was a delay, wasn't there? So do you want to elaborate a bit more for us on that? Sure, sure. So so poetry is always um, you know, I've I've always been been interested in, in poetry from, from a young age. And you know, there's there's been uh, periods where, where I've tended to, to write a bit more and then and then periods where it's kind of, you know, been a little bit more on, on, on the back burner. Um and <laughs> You know, I, 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 I had it, quite a few poems that I'd written down and, and wanted to put out, out a collection. Um, I, I'd been working uh, for a couple of local newspaper titles in, in I was living in, in Cheltenham um, during um, quite, quite a bit of my, my 20s. Um, and um, so... So, so I, I had I had enough poems, and at the age of sort of 26, 27, um, I, I I spoke to um, well through through the local newspaper. I'd, I met a contact who, who worked for a, um, a publisher in in Gloucester, um, and spoke to him, at, you know, about about publishing um, self publishing the poems that I had, um, and yeah, it, it felt felt like a good time. And 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 I, I sort of you know I squirreled away I, I, I put away um, carried on on writing after that um, and I guess you know lock, lockdown kind of gave you that that you know it, it gave you that sort of time to to, to think and, and breathe a bit so um, those poems that that I, that I wrote sort of you know through my later twenties and through my thirties. Um, uh, and, and more recently, um, I, I then I then felt I, I felt sort of naturally it was time to um, to, to to publish a, a, a second collection. So, yeah, the, 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 there's there's probably been there's there's been sort of gaps in there. There's there's been sort of two three years where um, you know my my career in journalism sort of intensified a bit. I, I worked for quite a few different regional titles and then, and then moved to um, to, to London and, and work for a national um, newspaper, and uh, and you know with the the, the long hours um, and you know that that sort of being being my my primary focus I suppose at the time um, my writing kind of um, w w was there, um, but uh, um, I was probably writing less prominently sort of. You know, four or five years ago, and then more recently, picked it picked it up again. 
Yeah, I think. What do you think to the, the method about? I know it's interesting enough. I've been speaking to a few writers of lockdowns, you might have guessed. But it's been interesting, really, because I know writers, a lot of writers have either completely stopped over lockdown mm. or the writers have gone in a different direction. Yeah. Do you feel you, do you, I think you're more the second, aren't you, of what I can understand? I think it's yeah. quite, it's gone, you've, you know, it's evolved, hasn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've read a lot on. Um, you know, on, on, on Twitter, on social media, you know, from, from a lot of poets that, that have um, found uh, f- found it perhaps more difficult to, 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 to write for, for whatever reason. And, and perhaps um, perhaps one, one reason might be that, that you know, d- during lockdown, you're, you're in the same confined space for a, a, a long time that, that um, you know, maybe the inspiration is, is a little bit more difficult or, or it's... Um, you know, people that, 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 that are spending time trying to write, often writing poems that, that, that are quite similar. Um, but, but for me, it, it really became an opportunity to, um, because I, I was commuting less, um, the, the job, you know, I have at the moment, there's a lot of commuting time usually in it. So, so I, I was, I was found, I found that, that I was able to write, you know, first thing in the morning, morning, um, in the uh, in the evening, and, and just you know, I had a lot more time to to, to be able to focus on um, my writing and, and and to develop it, it further. Um, which um, yeah, has has has, has thank, thankfully be, been the case. So so you know, since the the, um, the publication of White Side of Needle in, in April, I, I've I've continued to 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 thankfully write. write um quite quite a lot as well so um, well, that's, that's good news that because you think really because we're still, still in the middle of lockdown at the moment as of recording yeah and obviously like people are wondering obviously we, do, we don't know yet ourselves whether lockdown time has gone out whether it's been lifted by then even because there's just a lot of things a lot up in the air at the moment really isn't there so, yeah. so we just don't know what, what's going to happen next so certainly so like it was um, how did um, obviously like in relation to the two books, then, how did you yeah. feel? If you look back at them now, can you see mm. a massive creative shift in your writing t- between the two books? Yeah, I think there's a lot of development development there. I, I think um, you know, in, in the first book, there's a lot of shorter um, shorter poems, um, and I think you know, White Eye of the Needle, it's it's written in in, in free verse. Um, you know, some some of the the, the poems in White Side of Needle were, were were written not too long um, after publishing uh, Bread Rolls and, and Dresden, but um, you know, there's 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 more thought about um, about form in there. Um, the, the, there's more, you know, the, the language has has developed somewhat. You know, I was I was I was 27 when Bread Rolls and, and Dresden was published, and um, uh, you know that was uh, that, that was eight eight years ago now. So so just in in terms of both um, language form and um, and and content, because um, you know perhaps more more life experience um, that that kind of thing as well. And you know the white white eye of the needle is there's a lot of um, there's a few lockdown poems in there. There's there's quite a few uh, uh, travel-based poems. There's, there's a few romantic, um, uh, you know, more more love poems in, in there as well. So um, yeah, it's it, it, it's a development in, in a few sort of senses of the word, you know. Yeah, completely. Because I do want to know this one, but um, in between my first two poetry books. Um, there was a five five and a half year gap between them, and it was like, and I look back at the two books now, and I can see, and I'm not the case. I'm bad man with those books or not. It's just, yeah, I think you can see it sometimes. You look back at them thinking, wow, <laughs> that's yeah. why. So yeah. yeah, and I know you said already you've obviously been writing more since April as well. So hopefully then it won't take you eight years to get your third poetry book out. Then <laughs> no, 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 absolutely, absolutely, and you know there, there is there is time when. You know, when when you when you 
you've had a poem that you've left for, for a few years and, and, and you've rewritten and, and, and you have that time to, to go back and, um, and edit it further. You know, I, I, th- I think there's, um, th- there's something in that. And it's not the case with every, every poem in, uh, in the book, but, but there's certainly pieces in there that have been um, rewritten or, or developed, um, uh, you know, a, a few times, which, uh, which I think has, has hopefully um, really improved it. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Well, good luck with it, mate. Definitely, because if people are wondering, I think it's a really good book, this John Stewart you've done here. I think it's really well designed and well executed book. It was a pleasure reading it. You sent me over a copy to me. It's definitely so. Now, I know you got uh, And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do something a little bit different here, OK? Because obviously, I would be having the book in front of me. I know you're going to read out a few points just in the second half in a few moments' time. So what we'll do is, we'll, we'll grab this last bit down, a few more quick, quick, quick fire questions. And then I can ask you some questions about the poems directly in the second half, okay? So sure. you're going to read for us some. Now, what plans do you have for going for going forward, Chris? Do you have any for that, any any sort of projects in mind at the moment you can reveal? Well, I've I've got a a few few poems on on, on the on the go that um, I'm submitting to to a, a few different publications. Uh, I've also um, I've also recently been back in touch with my um, with with my English uh, teacher from from school, which has been oh wow. Interesting. She heard that I, I'd you know that I had a book out, and uh, so um, so so she we've been talking about sonnet sonnets. So the, my focus, um, I think, you know, going forward is is going to be on on sonnets and uh, and and to try and work on. Um, you know, a, a series of, of of sonnets. So I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. Oh, well, I, I love sonnets. I love to love sonnets. I've only ever wrote one of them, and I got that. Mm. Um, I've, I've got read out at a sonnet festival actually the other year. Actually, did last year. Uh, so that's why. Uh, I'm, and yeah, I remember that well because this is about you today. But I'll tell you this to make you laugh. This they turned around and said to me, "Oh, it's a brilliant modern day sonnet. When did you write this, Andrew?" I didn't have that time. I wrote it originally 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, just, yeah. I just retweaked the ending a little bit and sent it across. And, because I think they're really hard format to get into. So where did you love the sonnets yeah. come from originally? Because it's, it's such a specialised type of poetry, I think. Yeah, it is really. And I, I guess, you know, what, when, when I was at, at school, you know, like, like many um, poetry wasn't, wasn't, something that that um grabbed me straight straight away when, when when i was at school in terms of studying it and uh um and, and analyzing uh um, poetry but but um yeah at, at, at school we, we we studied sonnets and uh and, and shakespeare and um and uh, as as i say sort of sort of being back in touch through um uh, with with my my English teacher and, and sort of t- talking to her about it, she's actually she actually sent a, a poem that she the sonnet that she'd written uh, over to me and, and we got chatting and oh, um, wow. and and I'm a fan of uh, um, you know E. E. Cummings and and uh, yeah it's it, it's something it's something that that, that I fancy um, exploring and, and sort of feels right at the moment. So yeah, I'm always a believer of writing. You've got to go. You've got to write what feels right to you. There's no, mm. and if you could try forcing it, you sound absolutely copperless, my opinion, half the time. Yeah. So that's yeah. well, not brilliant. Okay, good luck. We're definitely so. Now, obviously, if people want to get hold of either of your two collections, yeah. where are the best going? So, if they visit my my website, which is www.chriscampbellpoetry.co.uk. Uh, that, that's that's the best place to go um, to, to to read a bit more about both books and and also my my social media uh, um, social media accounts are on there as well. So Brilliant. I know if people are wondering, obviously, I've had a quick look. Well, both books you can can pick up on Amazon quite easily. And I, but I guess I say, oh, good and evil news news that booksellers are basically should be available from. Them. It's worth it and mm-hmm. worth it. I don't doubt the first book's great. The first, second one's, I love the second one. I really do. It's a pleasure reading oh, it. Thank so, you very much. So what we'll do, Chris, I'll we'll take a quick break and let you get composed and let you come back with really cool pieces out to which I'm guessing are from the second book, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be surprised Thanks. with the work, mate. So, right. Anyway, guys and girls, <laughs> thank you again, Chris. We'll see you all in a minute. Thank you. Spoken, mate. 
Hi guys, still here with Chris, just to show you how the greatest plans change. Chris was going to do four poems originally for White Eye and the Needle, but I've just found out he's not reading out my favourite poem in the collection, so he's doing five now. <laughs> so, <laughs> over to you, Chris. Go for it, mate. Thanks, Andy. So this first poem is called Chimney Snorkels. We reach a corner and catch a couple, hand in hand, keep our distance, fingers away from our faces. The light has faded, unveiling the moon, a crescent with a single star below, as if they arrived to a night's party together. The canal glistens, narrow boats like guards on shift, replacing daytime geese patrol. From thin black chimney snorkels, smoke invades the crisp air, putrid and thick. A woman sits in a saloon back to the open door, asserting a point to male companions. The cafes and pubs look empty, but in the distance, a pizza neon sign bends the horizon. Who has the dough for electricity while no one bakes and not a soul visits? Underneath the bridge, a man waits by the path. His coat is zipped up tight. He seems bemused, anxious, flashing an impatient look. His eyes brighten in the dark. He lets us pass in silence. I gesture a thank you. His mouth looks like it opens, but it hides behind the mask. Ooh, I like the ending there, but I hide behind the mask of that one. Now, a couple, <laughs> a couple of things I'll ask you about this one, Chris, is and I didn't notice who they've done. Who's done the illustrations in this collection? Yeah, so, so the illustrations um, have, have been done by a, a colleague of, of mine, um, uh, an ex-colleague of mine for, from the South Wales... Evening Post. So, so I worked uh, in 2014, um, and her, her name is Sandra Evans. So she was uh, a graphic designer for the newspaper. Um, right. A friend of mine. No, it's really good. Oh, you said it at the end then. Haha, <laughs> spot at the end of the book. Yeah. Now, Chimney Snorkels yeah. then. I know from what you were telling me off mic before, you and your wife live on, live on the back of a canal. Is this about that canal or is it somewhere else? Yeah, so so it's about that canal. So you know, while um, restrictions uh, were, were in place, you know, the, um, you know, the, the canal was really a bit of a saving grace for us in, in terms of being able to to um, to, to get out the, the the house and 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 walk um, up and down it towards. On one side, there's a there's a big uh, nature reserve, and, and and the other um, takes you sort of towards West Bridgeford in, in Nottingham, which is a, a beautiful part of. Uh, of the city so um so so yeah so so it's written about about the canal across the road from us i thought it was it felt like not, not to come to me that there's a beautiful poem that one so really not i'm not, not gonna i'm not gonna start analyzing bits of it here but i just thought yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely okay mate what's your second poem then for us okay so so the second poem and is uh saint ives calf where scones jam and cream Sit proudly on the counter, above today's capped sea bream. The waitress in her overalls, all white but with a stain, where chocolate cake and lemon slice slipped after serving mains. And beside the cafe's tables, where tourists escape the rain, is the art of local residents to show why they remain. Wow, you caught me out with that one completely. Excellent. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely that piece that one. So, okay, tell us, tell us, tell us about that piece. So, so that was written. Um, that, that was written around uh, four or five years ago when um, my wife and I went to uh, to, to Cornwall on a um, on a. It was a, a short short break for a, a long weekend, um, and yeah, we had had a had a lovely trip. But the weather wasn't wasn't great when we were we were there. So. Um, we, we were out near the near the beach and and uh, had to dash into a uh, a cafe as it was raining and it was um, yeah it was based on our, our short time in inside that cafe and I, I remember um, going back you know back to we were staying in an Airbnb about 15, wow. 20 minutes away wow. and uh, and writing a bit of it that that night and sort of the, the next morning. Um, wow. Question I want to know is obviously people will look at the book. There's a lovely illustration of a cake on the bottom of it. Yeah. What's, the, what's the cake in the cafe that night as nice as that? 
I, well, the, I mean, the illustrations are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but the cake did taste good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that is a nice, great piece. I love, I love that one. It was a slightness of that because the first one was a longer piece, and that's a really good contrast using a much more snappier, shorter piece there. So, no good stuff, oh, mate. Thank you. Well, okay, that one. Um, uh, very, very fortunately, that that one won the um, the, the Portico Bibri uh, Poetry Prize recently. So, was, uh, oh, well done. No, it deserved it, mate. Absolutely deserved it. Excellent. Okay. On to number three, then. Number three is uh, it's called Last Night of Our Honeymoon. You glance across the table, lift a glass as the bar fills up beside us. A French couple, arm in arm, then another. Laces cut into bare feet. Middle-aged partners, singletons, drink in one hand, experience in the other. The chatter thickens like smoke. We squeeze further into our corner. Now half sat on a piano stool, I move my chair again, my legs pressed, tighter under the table, almost touching pedals. I imagine the notes of Feralisa as Barham beats into our conversation, Zebu and fresh fish arrive. We eat side by side, the candle facing us, the taps of shoes are circling, but beside us, a restaurant sits empty, laid out cutlery and glass, Waiting as I did under the arch last night of our honeymoon. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, that Chris. And the eagle eyed people won't necessarily spot it there. That's actually the last collect poem in the collection as well. And I think that's a that's lovely cool. way that's a lovely way of finishing the collection off that one. Was that planned, was it that way? When you set the book out originally? Yeah, it, it came when when I was Putting, um, you know, looking looking at the poems and, and, and the order and putting them all together, it, it felt like uh, it felt, you know, where, where it should where it should go. And, um, um, you know, as you as you say, it, it felt right to end, end, end the collection with with, with that. And uh, that that was, you know, it was it was written shortly after um, our honeymoon, and we, we were lucky enough to uh, to go to, to Madagascar. We were lucky enough to to get married in in 2019, so just before um, you know COVID and, and and anything like that. But um, yeah, we went to um, we went to, to Madagascar, and 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 we uh, and and that was yeah that that was our, our last night in in uh, in, in the capital um, Tana. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it felt fitting to to finish the collection with it. Yeah, it had to that sort of um, man. It felt like a bit of like an end scene in the film, much of that did to me. And I kept thinking, <laughs> of, um, oh, Casablanca for some reason. I would play it again, Sam. I don't, I don't know why, but not. no, no. It's one of my favourite pieces in the collection, now, and I think it's it's that sort of finality is always good to the way I finish your book off. That's why, and it's not necessarily the word mentioned last in it. It has that, you know what I mean, sort of finalness of a collection, mate. Oh, excellent. Okay, Thank then. you. On to number four. So number four is, yeah, I'll, I'll save yellow, yellow dress for, as, as we said, for, for, for the end. But, uh, number four is Mr. Painter. Houses rub shoulders, paint falls like peeling skin. And I ask where the sea is. Amongst the rubble and the dirt, a small face, school kids back off the bus. They joke, skip and dance, and the hills roll in the background like silent guardians waiting for the rain. An old man grips a rubbish bag like a painter needs his pots. Paint this part, mister, say the kids, pointing at gaps in the houses. And he sweeps his brush, coarse as a wave, heavy as rain. This too will age. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. That's Mr. Painter. Yeah, that's really good. Because again, I like the fact where you're going on about the difference between that how every, everybody ages, basically. We've not found a way yet of immortality, yeah. that's for sure, mate. So, what's that? Actually, I don't no, want to. No, yeah, try. I'm still trying. Well, I think we all are. I'm not going to ask too many questions about, obviously, the main person in this book. Was it a real person, was it? It, it was yeah, it was it was a real person, and I had a flat. I was living in in Swansea at the time, and it was a top floor 
um, flat and I used to, um, um, you know, I'd look out over the, uh, the street in, in Uplands, which is a, an area of, of Swansea and uh, um, quite a, a sort of, I don't, I don't know if it's still correct to term it as a, an up and, um, a great area of the city to live in. There were quite a few students there and uh, um, yeah, it, it was, it, it was a, a scene of, um, you know, I could see the, the school bus pull up and uh, uh, an old man walking, walking up the street. So, so it was based, based on that. No, it's great stuff. Great stuff. Now, I know already what the last point was going to be because I kind of, kind of <laughs> press ganged you into this one. <laughs> what's the last? What's the last yeah, point, mate? Yeah. Yellow dress. You pose in a yellow dress on a heated patio. Smile is called teen. It resonates as you stroke your curled dark hair. For a lockdown seems forever without your beauty there. Olives sunbathe in their oil, swelter side by side. Our hedge slumps over brick, an aged window pipes out before. I sweat still, burning this to memory. You glisten like an asanga. Dress draws me in, a gentle tide, curves soft in lemon. What a lovely poem that way, Chris. That's a great way, great way of concluding that. Where some people would go and do the last poem in the book last. You go and do the first one. <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah. Now tell us about yeah. that. That's and, the uh, it's got such a beautiful image in that to us. It, it was it was a lockdown. It was a lunch that we um you know last year we we're fortunate to have some uh, some some good weather as I remember in um uh, in, in, in April May May time and it was you know we'd had a, a, a picnic in in the uh, in our um, on our patio you know in our back garden and uh, and my wife was was wearing a, a yellow dress and um, we we often have uh, before on you know in, incense on in in the house because um, we've got a, a, a cat which uh, you know we uh, <laughs> to, to, to mask the so we have an indoor cat so. Um, yeah, we often have before on, and uh, and it, it was it was sort of piping out, out of the uh, out of the window, and it was uh, I, I was sort of lying on a, a picnic rug, and, and my my wife was st stood up behind it. Ah, oh. <laughs> brilliant, mate! Great stuff but, but today. Also, um, there's uh, there's there's a, a guy called a, a Sanger who who, um, who who's makes uh, ice sculptures. So he's 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 done uh, he's done stuff for, for Elton John and I, I, th I think I think even members of the, the royal family. But he's uh, I've, I've, I've checked out quite a bit of it, his work before. Makes these amazing um, you know um, life size ice sculptures and, and bigger sculptures as well. All, all sorts of, of things. So. Uh, I, uh, I I told him afterwards that, that I'd um, I'd written that poem and I'd mentioned him. So he's uh, uh, he, he sent me a lovely uh, message back. He, he seems a really uh, really nice guy. So so I enjoyed that that sort of part to the poem as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a lovely piece because it's, I think it's a great way of actually starting the collection off that because it's got that just some kind of innocence about it. It's well, the, the last piece really is like quite a silent piece. This is a much a silent in duller colours. This is a really bright piece. I think we mentioned like yellow, yellow and stuff. It's just like it's a really bright way of starting the book off. And I think it's a really it's a really good move that way, actually. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, Chris. Anyway, that's covered all the questions today. So we'll let you go and enjoy your evening now. Now hang around, mate. I do need to speak to you off mic anyway. But I've really enjoyed it today, mate. It's been a pleasure. Andy, thank you very much. Thanks for your time and the opportunity. It's been great yeah. to, uh, to be Indeed, part mate. of it. Great come series. Back. Yeah, come back and again, mate, when you get your next third book out, you're always welcome, mate. Oh, so. thank you. We'll do. <laughs> right. Thanks, anyway, mate. guys and girls, that's it for today. As Don Carlis says on Impact Wrestling, stay safe and stay over. We'll see you all next time.